Hello, on this edition of Read with Ronald, I'm back with my friend Tati Simone. She's back. We're doing another book swap. This time we rec we reading two books I recommended. The first one we're gonna get into is God Don't Like Ugly. Let's give it a trigger warning before we even get into it. This because this book has it has um it has themes of of molestation, of abuse towards a child, it has themes of murder, and um what's some other themes? Cause this book yeah because it's a lot of abuse um there are it's not too bad only in the beginning is there a lot of racial things but yeah, there it, are a lot of things things of racism colorism fat phobia i mean these are all things that kind of come up but i think the abuse is yeah, yeah the abuse is explicit so keep that in mind while you're reading this book i actually which they came further down the line but i did have to skip over some parts because child First published in 2000, Mary Monroe's God Don't Like Ugly follows Annette Good and the ups and downs of life she faces growing up in Richland, Ohio. God Don't Like Ugly is the first in a six-part series written by Monroe. It was Monroe's second published novel following the success of her 1985 debut novel, The Upper Room, and received the Penn Oakland Josephine Miles National Literary Award. Today is January 11th. Me and Tati are collaborating once again, and it was my month to choose the two books that we read. So the two books we'll be reading this month are God Don't Like Ugly and God Still Don't Like Ugly by Mary Monroe. I read God Don't Like Ugly like two years ago. Um, I enjoyed it, but it was very much heavy subject matter. So I'm kind of hoping that I don't traumatize Tati with this book especially because i really only chose it so i could read the sequel because i needed to read the sequel um i haven't gotten around to reading it yet so that's really why i chose it and also the third book i have the third book too we're only reading these two for this swap because i've already read god don't like ugly and i'm already familiar with the storyline in the world of god don't like ugly i can confidently say that this book has the wrong title it should be called god don't bless mess because this the first book this right here this right here god don't like ugly this is mess so this book should be called god don't bless mess because that's what that was that's mess um i enjoyed reading it but i can confidently say that that was some mess right there it's mess and them, them characters and being that book playing with god and but but we still we still gonna read it we gonna read it because i need I, honestly i need somebody to rant to and I need somebody who's going to understand what I'm ranting about, who's going to see what I see. And it's like literally on the same wavelength as me when it comes to reading these books and, and talk to you that person. Today is January 17th. I'm reading God Don't Like Ugly. Well, not even reading. I'm rereading this book because I already know what's going to happen in the story. And uh, <laughs> once again, <laughs> I'm getting pissed off with Mama. Uh, he may. Uh, she get on my nerves. I don't know if I'm more pissed off. Yes, I do. I'm not as pissed off at her as I am Mr. Boatwright because Mr. Boatwright is just disgusting. But uh, I, I still am kind of, I'm still also pissed off at Gussie May too. Especially because Gussie May, girl, what are you doing? How do you not, why are you... <laughs> I'm trying not to say too much because I want to save it for the discussion. I'm like, Gussie May, what are you doing? I'm like, why are you letting strange this strange man in your house find your daughter? Like, what are you doing? So I'm already getting irritated with her again. And then we ain't even reached the like the dark part of the storyline yet. But um I call it the dark part, but really it's just the disgusting part. Because why would you let this man in your house? You don't know him. You don't know this man. You, let me get off here. Let me get off here. I'm. A, I'm. A, I want to save all of this for the discussion. Cause if I start going in now, I'm. Um, I just need to get off of here right now. Today is January 18th. Um, I'm trying to be done with reading God Don't Like Ugly by the end of today. Right now, I'm on chapter 17 of 55. But even if I don't finish the whole book today, I'm not all that concerned because I've already read it. I've already read it and I've already like finished it. I already know it's going to happen. So 
I'm just really just rereading it to kind of like, I guess, refresh myself on anything I haven't, I don't remember from my first time reading it. Because the book I really need to read is God Still is God Still Don't Like Ugly, because that's the one I haven't read, and that's the one I really need to read for the discussion. Um, but with that being said, I'm on chapter 17. I hated Mr. Boatwright the first time I read this book, and I hate him even more now, the second time. And um, before I even get into all that, this book is still a good book. It's as good as I remember it being. Now, whether I'm enjoying reading it is a whole other, uh, just a whole other story. This is a good book, but it's not an enjoyable book, if that makes sense. Like, the situation that happens for, like, the first half of the book is not enjoyable. I don't know anybody who would want to read about that. But the book itself is a good book. It's making me feel all the emotions that it wants me to feel, which is a sign of a good book because you're feeling what the author wants you to feel. And now, as far as the characters... <sighs> Like I said, I hate, I hated Mr. Boatwright the first time I read this book. I hate him even more now. He gets on my nerve. He's irritating. He's annoying. And I just want to punch him in the face. I just want to punch his face in. But yeah, I, I severely hate Mr. Boatwright. And his death is not satisfying to me. It, was, it, it wasn't satisfying to me the first time. And when I read it again, it's probably going to be even more dissatisfying. Because I wanted more to happen to him. I wanted more. I, what the way he died that wasn't satisfying to me I wanted more I wanted more I wanted so much more regarding his ending and his fate what he got that no he deserved worse he deserved worse than death his death was unsatisfying to me and as far as Gussie May goes Gussie May Good is probably the most irritating character I have ever read in my life and what makes it even worse is we as the reader are supposed to be rooting for her because she's Annette's mother but I'm not rooting for this lady I don't like this lady I'm mad at her really I'm really mad at her because how do you not I'm not gonna rant I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be ugly because like the book title said God don't like ugly so I'm not gonna be ugly because I don't want to rant right now because I want to save it all for our discussion so I'm not going to rant and I'm not going to be ugly but what I will say is Mr. Boatwright irritates me Gussie May irritates me Annette at certain times irritates me but Annette is allowed to irritate me because she's the one that's going through all of this and so even though I'm irritated with her it's like I understand why she at least why she does what she does I think that's what irritates me most with Gussie May is that we don't have a clear understanding of her character and we finally reached the part where Rhoda and uh, Jock and her the Rhoda and her home family appear Rhoda and Jock are some of my favorite characters in this book I don't care I don't care Rhoda and Jock are some of my favorites because they just came into the book and they just turned the whole storyline upside down and just topsy-turvy and it was it was so needed we needed Rhoda and Jock in this book because they are a good counterbalance to Mr. Boatwright. Like they, like they are like that oasis away from him and his craziness and the stuff that he be doing. And like, they did. They just needed. They were needed in this book. They were needed. Like I said, I'm just hoping to finish this whole book by tonight. And if I don't, I've already read it, so I know what's going on. I know the storyline, so I can go into God still don't like ugly knowing like pretty much what happens and with enough knowledge to be able to read that book so today is uh january 19th i'm on chapter 42 of god don't like ugly mr boatwright finally is finally dead i'm not gonna be ugly but he finally dead his death still was not satisfying to me but it is what it is now annette is grown she about to start her own life so we're getting into this part where she started, you know, selling herself for money. And then, um, you know, her and Rhoda going to get into it and they're going to break up uh, friendship wise. They're going to break up their little friendship. And that's where the book is going to end.
that is where the book's going to end, but it's going to be a few more things that Mama does to piss me off. Like, uh, bringing another man around. Ain't learned nothing. So, obviously, that just proves that she didn't learn nothing the first time. So, uh, Goosey Mae is going to piss me off for the rest of this book, but otherwise, other than that, um, I plan on finishing it today and starting the other one tonight. The first time I read this, I gave it five stars. I think I'm going to give it four stars this time. It's still a good book, but I don't, I don't think it's five star worthy. Today is January 20th. Um, I finished God Don't Like Ugly last night. It was great. It was wonderful. Four stars. Um, Annette and her many boyfriends pissed me off, especially Levi and uh, Pee Wee. Levi, Levi and Pee Wee pissed me off the most out of the boyfriends she had in her adult years. Um, and then she uh, she broke up with Rhoda. She broke up her friendship with Rhoda behind all the the murders Rhoda committed. But you know what? It is what it is. Um, I liked it. I enjoyed it. Four stars. It was a great book. Just as great as I remember it being. How did I get this book? <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> how I got this book was um I was going on a road trip I was going on a road trip and uh I needed something to read so I wanted to read this other book by her it's called Miss Wiggins but I wasn't familiar with her writing style so uh I just I, I got a book that was cheaper by her first to see if I would like it and um so I got the free sample of this and I just I got engrossed so I bought the whole thing and, and that's how I got this. So today we dressed up like church people to to be on theme. And just like we in church, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my hat off. You know, we're going to be respectful around here. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Got my All right. Uh, Y'all see? We might get into some things. Might give into some details about the book. So if you have not read the book, you may or may not want to continue. Right. But Click off because we yeah, talking about the book. Yeah, this is a discussion. So let's kind of set the give this um announcement right now this is a discussion about the book so like of course it's like a review and things like that but you know how some reviews and some people they're not going to give you spoilers they're going to tell you what happened in the book we're 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 digesting this we're going through the actual pieces of the book so if you're not into that if you just came to get a little sprinkle of what the book is about another video go <laughs> read like, go read the summary go read the summary and because... just know that it has some heavy heavy topics yeah, because we're getting into this book. And can we talk about this cover? Can we talk about this cover? Oh, it ain't. This cover is gorgeous. Both covers eat. Like, you can, you can clearly look at it and see Annette and Rhoda. Like, clearly. That's them. It eats. I love it. I love both of these, honestly. I love uh, and it. But you know what? Since since we little got a little bit of time, um, whoever drew... This one right here, the third book. Whoever drew this cover, oh, God, electric God. chair, electric chair. <laughs> this look, I think it's the same cover artist, but for some reason, this cover do not look right. Okay, y'all heard the man. But uh, we are going to start with God on like ugly. Are oh, really okay? I had a thought of because uh -huh. my rating is kind of both of them together. Okay. Because we're doing it as a pair. You want to start off? You can give your writing first. What do you rate them together as a pair? As a pair, they had 3.5. Averaging, averaging their scores together. Averaging their scores together is a 3.5. Period. <laughs> Separately, if you go on my Goodreads or my Storygraph, God don't like ugly going to say five. That's my rating from the first time I read it. But this second time I read it, it's a four. And we're going to get into why right now uh first of all this book don't need to be called god don't like ugly it needs to be called god don't bless mess oh it need to be called god don't bless mess because that's what this was oh, no. this was mess this was mess these people ain't living for god they're not living right these the these the yes, people sir. that say they christian but they go they the, they the sunday only christians they go to church and then monday through saturday and they live in how they want to live I together I give them a 3.5 definitely this book though I give the I give this book a four I gave this book a four um it took me a little minute to get into it I don't know why it was it took me a little minute to get into this book probably because like all the books I don't know why I don't read the actual like book like the summary didn't read the summary so I'm just reading this book just, just reading and it took me a while to get past the first part of the book and I think that like 
for me, a lot of it, how I'm putting it, <clears throat> with this book, I like it. It was a lot of drama. It was a lot of mess. It was definitely a lot of mess. But the beginning kind of had me because I was like, what this man, what are we talking about? Mm -hmm. What are we talking about? Because we start off with meeting Mr. Boatwright. We start off with meeting him. And I'm like, mm, okay. But only for like two seconds. And then we go to her life in um, in Florida. So to give y'all a little backstory of this book and some of the characters, I guess we get into it. So this is Annette Good. This is what she looks like. She's a plus size, dark skinned little girl. Her mom, what's her mom name? Because I didn't forget. Gussie May. Gussie May. Her mom is Gussie May. They're from Florida. And they moved to Ohio, to Richland, Ohio, with this lady named Scary Mary, who um, we find out do some shady dealings that we could talk about later. And um, she ends up growing up there with her mom, because her dad ends up leaving. It's her mom, her, and this man named Mr. Boatwright. They all live in the house together. And then we meet these other two characters who turn out to be her best friends, which are, well, Rhonda is her best friend. And then there's Pee Wee, which is this scrawny little boy who got all the gossip at the town. Okay, just to give y'all a little backstory. So we go, that's the backstory. Now we're about to head to Florida. I just want to start off by saying, I read this book previously before we read it for this. So I knew what was going to happen. And mm -hmm. so um, that's why I kept saying, I, I warned Tati so many times. I'm like, this storyline get dark. It gets dark quick. Go in prepared. And then when I was actually reading, I was like, oh, wait, this got a little dark too quick. And then I didn't think about it. I was like, I hope Tati didn't have no experience like this because I don't want to be traumatizing people. She's a good writer. I will say that. She's a good writer. So like, just like you feel and you, she's able to explain in great details, like her childhood and different things. The same amount of detail and feelings that you experience when you're reading the regular parts, you're going to feel that or even more when you're reading the other parts. When I was reading this, I was traumatized and I didn't even have no experience like that growing up. Like life, it kind of happened. You get the clues, but it really did happen suddenly because for a minute in the book, we're just getting her childhood. So we're getting her life up to like from like three up to like seven. My first note says Gussie May is pissing me off already by bringing Mr. Boat right around. Now, um, like I said, I already read this book before, so I knew what was going to happen. But the first time I read this book, I knew what was going to happen to Annette. I knew the minute she said she was not comfortable around that man. And yeah. I was like, I was like, Lord, please don't, don't let this turn into one of them stories. And it turned into one of them stories. And it pissed me off because I was like, why would you? I'm not going to rent yet. I'm not going to rent yet. So we started there. And for me, I was like, oh, okay, she got a bad feeling. What's about to be going on? Especially when her mom was like, you better mind everything he says. And she couldn't put it, like, she couldn't put it into words. And that's how I feel like you are in that situation. You can't put it into words. Even if you've ever, I don't think you've necessarily, because she hadn't been abused at that point. You don't necessarily have to be abused. But it's certain people, especially if you've never been abused, where it's like, I don't know what's telling me no about you, but something saying no. That's so I kind of knew where it was gonna go, but she kind of got got me relaxed. She kind of got me relaxed once we went to the childhood because it's like, okay, we met this man, cool, whatever. She don't like him, but let's talk about like growing up and before we got to him. I had mixed feelings about the about Florida and just her life in Florida. Um, I had a lot of mixed feelings. I didn't even like how the book started. It's not I didn't like how the book started off. But already starting off when she was like, her mom put like a, a pig's foot in her mouth to like shut her up and like how that tied to her. You know, her upbringing was like, mm -hmm. I ain't going to judge because this was back in the day, but I, I was a little bothered by that. But I mean, they could have smacked her. So, you know, at least they gave her food instead. So the beginning of the book was not, was heavy, but it wasn't heavy. If that makes sense, they were going through a they they were going through things, but nothing like you would have thought. So that part of her growing up was like, I knew it was gonna be trouble. I knew it was gonna be trouble. I thought the hurricane was gonna. I thought 
the hurricane was gonna kill her daddy. If you want me to be honest, I thought the hurricane was it hurricane. It was a hurricane. Oh, I thought it was going to kill her daddy, Easy. but it was not. Um, her dad left like this, girl. I, I don't even child. I don't know why she was so into her daddy, but I kind of understood it. That man ran off with a white woman, and I that plays into a big thing with like the civil rights movement and black, really pro black men sometimes because it's this common thing of like I'm pro black, I'm pro black, I'm pro black. Until it's time, and then having this desire to be with white women mm -hmm. that this book kind of touched on. Cause I didn't know what, and I had hope. I'm like, oh, he's that, her daddy about to die. That lady snatched him up. He didn't do something he wasn't supposed to do. Like, I'm thinking her dad's gonna die or something. So, reading this book, while I was reading this book, that's all I was thinking. I was trying to keep a positive mindset of like, Something had to have happened for him to have to leave with that woman. I didn't think, oh, I was trying my hardest not to think like, oh, he was in love with her, yada, yada, yada. And you really don't, for him, you really don't hear much after that until we get to way past the book. Her dad comes up, but you don't know what's really what really happened with him until you get later down in the book. This, I don't know, the whole hurricane scene, it kind of reminded me of... Uh... What's the other book? Their eyes were watching God. It kind of reminded me of a scene from that book because they have a, a a similar situation. So when I was reading it, I'm like, so is this like the part where like everything just goes haywire? And sure enough, it was. Everything went haywire. And when he left with uh that white lady, I was like, so you pro black? I'm black and I'm proud of this, but you running off with a white lady? And you supposed to, I feel like it was kind of like a, um, I feel like it was a power thing. When just, just from reading this specific book, I feel like it was a power thing with him running off with that white lady, you know, cause it's like, oh, I'm a black man, but I've managed to snag me a white woman. So I feel like that's kind of what it was. Especially because if you think about it, Gussie May herself is a light skinned woman. She's not that dark. She's not. So I was thinking, like, this man kind of like him, you know, women of a certain complexion. That's what it seemed like to me. Yeah. It reminded me of, like, and I don't know, maybe that's how she felt, but it, it it's like when you find out that Martin Luther King like white women. It's like that. It's like when you find out all these people that's like, how's it before? You find out all these people that's pro-black and they be liking white women behind closed doors. I One them a white woman. Like I said, I feel like it's a power thing. They feel like, oh, I can snag me a white woman. I got the power. So That mindset is dumb, but I feel like that's how they was thinking. But with him, as fast as he came, it was as fast as he left. And we ain't never heard from Frank again. We left ain't heard from Frank again. He um, left them out. He had them out there eating out of trash cans, stealing out of people's... He left them down. He left them down bad. It was hard for them. It was so hard that this lady, this is where we get to Scary Mary. I knew it was going to be someone with Scary Mary. I didn't know what it was going to be, but I knew anybody named Scary Mary. Look, she um, she was their savior. She was there. She was a godsend. <laughs> In a word, you see that? You see the that, quotation? That lady was not sent from God. So she, so what happened with her is she saw um and Annette and she was like, Oh, your child, she got Sarah Palsy. Like she thought it was something wrong with her because she was the the poor little girl was dragging around boots that were too big for her and they made her like slouch a little bit. So she ended up taking them in. She took them in and then she went to jail, left and went to Ohio, right? Because she said she, she had this beautiful house in Florida, beautiful house that she said her her ex-husband that was white that died gave her. That's not how she got the house. That's not how she got the house. But that's what she said. Now, she to before we get to her moving to Ohio, I want to talk about this miracle service that they mm -hmm. had in Florida where they met. Mm -hmm. That miracle service was a darn sham. They sit up there talking about some, oh, we there to get healing, we there to get miracles. But the only person that had a miracle was the person that was supposed to have a miracle, which was the person that set it up with the pastor to cough up the cancer 
that look like raw liver to cough up that little cancer. So it looked like he got healed to make the pastor look legitimate. Mm. First of all, if you if you was a real pastor and you really doing healing and miracles in the name of Jesus, you don't got to fake it. You don't got to make it look fake to get people to believe you. You a sham. And that's why Annette felt like her meeting Scary Mary was a miracle because it was a miracle service. But that was a terrible miracle in my eyes. But we going to keep going. Mm -hmm. I think that once you meet her, it's like, oh, okay, God worked through it. <laughs> Let me not say that. I, I didn't know how to feel about Scary Mary um, because I knew it was going to be something off. When she said the miracle came, I don't know why. I wasn't even paying attention to all, all the other parts. But when she was like, the miracle came through this woman named Scary Mary, I was like, mm, I'm hearing about her. She a little bit shady. The husband died. She go to jail. A little bit shady. And I knew for sure, for sure, I knew that Annette's reservations, she had a reason to be like that. I knew for sure. Because I was like, oh, this lady about to get them out there. I don't know. Yeah. It ain't going to be no good life when she get them out there. I just know it. I just know she's selling them a pipe dream. Just like she was talking about where, because, and this is how I knew. This is what made me be like, she's selling them a pipe dream. I got this big house. My husband gave me this money. My husband gave me this money. My husband gave me this money. Then you go to prison. You go to jail. Mm -hmm. You go to jail for, for, for running a rink out your house. It, so it was, I know that's a lot. It was scam artist. Yeah, so now... You coming down talking about mm, we gonna we gonna do this we gonna do that no we're not and when they got down there I felt so bad because I already knew what was going like from how she was describing it I already knew what was going on and for her to be that little and have to see that is really trifling mm -hmm. but to see her mom like persevere because she like no let me say this too it's this idea that they brought up of like moving from Florida, like her mama thinking she better than everybody else because she... Because she'd have moved north. Houses. Even though she moving north to clean people's houses. It's stuff like that that was like, but that's how a lot of people think. They think I'm better than you because I, I didn't move here. I didn't did this. And now look at the type of... Now look at the type of things that you have to do because you're not I won't say you're not where you're supposed to be, but like because you have this this dream that this is gonna be oh so much better when you really doing stuff you could have did in Florida. Honestly. I'm gonna say this, Gussie he May, you move to Ohio and you think you're so much better, but think about what you're doing while you cleaning them houses. What what are you doing? What are you really doing? What are you really there for? Mm -hmm. You dare to cook, clean, and basically do some other services that we gonna get into in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we go from there to Boat Right moving in. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And it was good until it wasn't, which is exactly, I like how she 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 was like, ah, something I didn't like about him. Then we meet him again, but it's like, oh, he's doing all these things because that's what people do when they're like grooming kids, doing all these, these great things. And that's like, I don't remember what page it was on. I don't remember none of that. I just remember I skipped the next probably four pages. Like from her being seven and him going into her room, I read probably a paragraph. And I was like, yeah, no, <laughs> no, I skipped that whole. I couldn't tell you nothing that happened during that part because it, I skipped. It, what that paragraph you read that led into it, that's all that happened. Oh, uh, well. That's all that happened. And. Uh, I'm not going to rant on him either yet, but just know that the first time I read it, I wanted to hop through that book and, and beat that man down. And so this time reading it, I really want to hop through that. This time reading it and knowing what was going to take place and knowing what was going to happen, I really wanted to hop through that book and beat that man down. Especially because she is seven. Seven. Like seven years old. And me and one of my homegirls was actually talking about this. I've been bringing this up a lot lately of like with this man, he was talking about how, which does happen, about how you will read a lot of um, men who are sent to jail for rape and you will read and they'll be like, oh, they were, this is why they were flirting with me. They were doing X, Y, and Z, right? 
Um, and he was like, this is why you got to stop saying that your baby, like your girl's a flirt or your son's a ladies man or something. Cause these people will say that. And then you read and it'd be like, the baby was one. There were five, there were seven. He's like, oh, I know. I see how you were looking at me. You want me? No, she's a child. Children smile at everyone. Children want to play with everyone. If I gave a child candy, they're going to want to sit in my lap and play with me too. That doesn't mean that they want anything other than that. The crazy part is Annette wasn't even smiling at that man. She didn't like that man. Said, I'm getting pissed off because I want to rant so badly, but I'm going to save it until it's time. Everything that happened was because you... You wanted said, to be nasty. You wanted to be nasty. And so that whole part was what killed me. Um, because that girl just, I mean, from that moment, the girl already had a hard life, but that just took, I think, a really big toll. And the good thing that, like, changed it was them moving into another house that this judge had. And I think the judge, not the, not just the judge, when you read the book, you'll notice a switch. You'll notice a switch from when they lived in Florida to when they moved to... Ohio. When they lived in Florida, she was always with her mom. She was on the porch. She was somewhere in the kitchen watching her mom cook and clean for these women in their houses, how they had it good. Because those women, which she made a point, which made me think, what did white women do? I'm sorry, I don't want to be like that. But think about it historically. They did have maids. What did they, they did do? not work. They had people to cook, clean, raise their children, and their husbands went to work. So what, like, Sat, I'm around, not sat around and complained and, and upheld the system that benefited them so well. And I don't know. That was, I'm not going to get too much into it. I'm not going to get too much into it because I know it's going to come up in another book. But what I will say is um, you notice that shift from that to when they moved to Ohio is when we in there in the train station, we see her mom's first male employer. You never hear about her mom having a male employer until that moment. And you'll notice that in while they're in Richland, all you he, like all of her employers for the most part are men. And you notice the difference of when she used to be like all through the house playing and stuff or talking to the people. Now she gotta just sleep in the basement. That's it. She don't do like the daughter um and then has to sleep in the basement. They don't really do much. And so you see that difference and she, you know, we find out why she walking to her mama. We find out what's going on. But she ends up looking up and getting with this judge and being able to move to his house to a nice part of the neighborhood where Scary Mary is. I think at this point, we can get into the type of person that Scary Mary is. You you could you can introduce her if you want to. Scary we, we Mary. Talk about, yeah. Scary Mary is a madam. She mm -hmm. is a madam. She be out here um employing these women to um I'm gonna I'm gonna put this respectfully. She be employing these women to go out and entertain these males. Well, no, actually, the males come to her to come to her house, and she provides the women to provide them adult Listen. services. That's how I'm gonna put it: adult services. Um, and she got. I think she had like five women working for her. Uh, I do not remember. She had a few know. women, but she had a few times. women. But Gussie May was um one of her fill-in women when one of her girls could not work. She would call Gussie May to come fill in for that girl because Gussie May owed her a few favors from when they was living down in Florida. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and, you, were... and uh, you can't tell me that Gussie May wasn't also engaging in the business when she was down in Florida. You can't convince me. Because I feel like she would have had to know what was going on when she moved over there with Scary Mary. I was going to say, I don't think that she, I I think, so I think she knew how scary, who Scary Mary was, but I don't think she was engaging in it until or fully in it until she got to Florida. I mean, until she got to Richland, because that's when she got the most desperate. Mm hmm because when they were in, in Florida, I don't feel like Scary Mary was like down on her look. I feel like that's another reason why she was able to convince Gussie Mae to go up there because she was like, I'm living this good life. It's so many things to do up here. You know, like encouraging her to make it seem like, because she was basically selling her a dream. So I feel like she was selling her a dream to make her think, oh, it's going to be different up here. It's not going to be the same. 
just for it to be the same. The same. Pro she's probably like, oh, but girl, you know, you know, it's better up here. You know, the black people up here, they so we so much better off. We live in a better life than we was down south, which probably was true. They probably did have a little bit, a little bit more freedoms, a little, a little bit more freedoms than black people did down south. But I feel like that's what she was able to bank on, the fact that life was a little bit better for black people up north. Just a little bit, though, not mm -hmm. too much. And sending those pictures. But, um, and you even hear, like, when you're talking about it, a part of her mom was like, uh, Scary Mary, I hear blackmailing me again. Scary Mary, I hear blackmailing me again. To be like, come on, girl. But, I mean, at the time, she had to do what she had to do. Not going not gonna to judge mama for having to do what she had to do. So we move from there into the child. Because I, honestly, from there, it's not much going on from them moving into the house except them, her building up a routine. Mm -hmm. Her building up a routine with, um, with Bo Wright. So this man, at this point, had been doing it for years. We get to, what, she's like 13? Yeah. 13 at this point. So he had been doing it for years. So by the time she's 13, she know him like the back of her hand. She she's learned to leverage. It sounds so terrible because it is terrible. She's learned how to leverage this bad experience for her good, basically. So um, she would like learn little tricks to get money out of him. She would tell him her period lasted way longer because, oh, God forbid, touching a woman when she's on her period. I could touch a seven year old, but you on your period? No, ma'am. Um, and I think at this point, as she gets older, she gets a little bit more outspoken, especially when she becomes friends, which we'll talk about later on. But at this point, you see um the inside of an abuser's head. Because it's moments where she's like, he sounds like a whining child, or he's like, Why are you still being mean to me? In his head, they really are lovers. In this man's head, they really are lovers. It's like, it's not, oh yeah, I'm doing she's like, you know what you're doing is wrong to me. It's this one part. And I don't remember if it's like after she becomes friends or before, but she's like, because she would mention to him, This is wrong. I don't want to do this. You know, I don't like this. Yada yada yada. And so one time she mentioned, like, you're wrong. You're out of line for this. And he's like, how come after all these years, you're still so mean to me? This man has the audacity to really, after all these years, you're still so mean to me. I don't like you. You're not my boyfriend. You're not my man. And the sick thing is this man had every way Y'all, this man figured out every way to, to just tear this girl down. Because you got to think about it. She is a child. Her mom's like, you better listen to this man. She's going to listen to him. And I didn't realize how much of a hold, like, when you don't realize in the book how much of a hold that this man has on everybody around him. Because at this point in the book, all we hear is that this man is terrible. We just only know him from Annette's lens. And you hear every now and again, oh, he's a good man. Oh, you better listen to him. But you don't know the type of person that everybody thinks that he is, right? Because he just gambling. He just doing everything wrong. And of course, we're all, nobody's without sin, right? Nobody's without sin, especially in this circle. But then they had to do what they had to do. So nobody's without sin. But um, it's almost like, We'll find out later that it's almost like they hold him to like a different standard. But yeah, so he he just, you know, they think he's just drinking a little cussing and stuff like that. They think it's nothing major that he's doing. Honestly, they think it's so gracious for him to be spending so much time with the little girl and all that type of stuff. And him like being her replacement daddy. So when they move into this big house, they meet Pee Wee. So Pee Wee is this, uh, what they call him, sweet. They call him funny. Pee Wee is supposedly funny. So he likes to gossip. He's a skinny little boy. He likes to gossip around town, all that type of stuff. And he follows Annette around everywhere, talking to her, trying to get her attention. That's all people want to do. He just he 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 the boy who hang out with all the adults, tell all the gossip and things like that. 
Um, and so they become, they don't become friends. They just, he just follow her around like a shadow. But she lets him come around because he talk about, he gives the miss. Then Rhonda moves in. Rhoda. 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 Rhoda is here. I love Rhoda. I love her. I know she did some things that was, um, be like, well, Rhonda, why you like her? But I like her. Rhoda and her brother, Jock, those are some of my favorite characters. I I loved Rhoda and Jock because they came in this book and they turned it upside down. And I was like, they were needed. They were needed in the storyline. Yeah. Yeah. They were needed in the storyline because when you just sitting there reading, reading, reading through Annette and her trauma and what she got to put it with that. When you read it through what she got put up with and then she can meet Rhoda and, and Rhoda come in and, and she just, Rhoda just turned it out. But we going we gonna to talk about it. Yeah, Rhoda is crazy, y'all. And it could be a good or a bad thing. When I first met Rhoda, let me tell you something. When she, before Rhoda came on the scene, but once she came on the scene, there's a difference between self-righteous, holy than thou Christians, and there's a difference between nobody's without sin. And sometimes we get a little too ahead of ourselves. And I think that that's what's going on here. Uh, half of the book, half of the people in the book are holier than thou. When we talk about everybody, self-righteous, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. Rhoda, who never claims to be like just, oh, so religious. Oh, I'm just such a Christian. But we know she's a Christian. We know she believes in God. But it's just, with her, it's not necessarily self-righteousness. It's like, sometimes we go about things the wrong way. Sometimes we don't do the best things that we should. But our heart is good. We know where our heart is supposed to be at. That's the difference. You realize how freaking ugly these people are. Like yeah. it's one thing, like, but like a disgusting heart, a disgusting mm -hmm. heart. Like they talking so much trash about these about these people. So much trash. You they know talk so much stuff about this little thirteen year old girl. Rhoda and Annette are thirteen when they meet. They're thirteen year olds. They not doing nothing. Well, all they really should be doing is going to school and going home and being in whatever little after school activities that they supposed to be doing. They 13. They can't help how they look. And that's what they are trying to do. Now, Rhoda, her description, she's just as chocolate because um, Annette is chocolate. Both of them are just as chocolate as each other. So um, Annette is plus size and Rhoda is skinny. And she has long hair. She looks like a little Barbie doll. She got long hair down her back. Um, and she, and she them, comes um, from this rich family. She got them green eyes because she's, uh, cause she's, she's a quarter. White. She's a quarter white. Yeah, she's a quarter white. Her dad is half white. Her dad is half white, um, which is a whole nother thing. So you want to get into the family dynamic of them because it kind of, their family dynamic intertwines. It plays a, a part in, a big part in What's going on? Now, I will say this. I wish we got a little bit more on the backstory of uh, her dad and his mom, the grandma, and how she ended up having a half-black son when all her other kids are white. But we don't ever get no background on that. She didn't leave. I thought she left. I thought she left their dad, the full white sibling's dad, for, um, for uh, Rhoda's dad. Dad's. Rhoda's the granddad. That's not what happened. I could have sworn that's what they said happened. I don't know. I don't know what happened. They just said that. Um, I just remember them saying that Rhoda's grandfather ended up being like lynched or something like that. Mm -hmm. Because he dared to mess with a white woman. That's all I remember. I don't remember the explanation on how they got together. I think it was because they ended up. I don't know. Well, they didn't explain how they ended up together. I just know she snuck around. That's uh -huh. what they did. But there's two parts in this book that get me a little up there and that's this is one of them so Rhoda comes from a family um what's her family name Nelson the Nelsons yeah. are a, a rich family whatever I don't know how they introduced it her dad is a is half white his mom is white and so he's taking care of it's her her brother Jock her mom her uncle Johnny who is a fully white man and her grandma they're all there uncle Johnny crazy Jock crazy junior <laughs> he's in oh. gags and stuff like that her dad is an undertaker um, and her mom, she's just, you know, her mom is a bap. Her mom is a bap. 
Um, yeah, her grandma and, is yeah. white and crazy. She's loony, especially at this point, because she has like dementia or something. So it's it's eating away at her brain. Her brain. So when she sees black people, her son is black and his kids are black, she be going off the wall sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it's ironic because they didn't want nothing to do with him. But once he came up on his money, because him and his friend, is it Carmine? Carmine. Carmine. He has an Italian friend who is Carm whose last name is Carmine. They go to the war together. He saves his life. They come back. They, you know, built their life up. So his white family find out, oh, he got money now. Not everybody wants to get to know him. And none of his mom's children would have anything to do with her. So he was the only one that took her in because they put her in a home. So she's at the house with them and they have to take care of her. Him and his wife had three kids. So there's Jock, we talked about, a little crazy. And then there's Rhonda, who is real crazy. <laughs> and, and then, then the then older brother, David. The older brother is David. David died when Rhonda was five. He got shot by the police officers and he died in her arms. Some little white girl got pregnant, said it was his baby. No, no, no. It wasn't the white girl. Man. It was the black, black officer who did it. So it was a black girl. Yeah. It was a little black girl who got pregnant. Said it was her brothers. Couldn't have been her brothers because he had a disorder. He had some medical issues, so he could not have babies. But she said it was his. Wanted him to get married. They got into it. The officer came and shot him dead, and he died in her arms. So Talking about she's fit the description of a robbery. But we only, all know what he really. The was. only description he fit was the uh, the boy that didn't want to marry your daughter. So that's why you went over there, call yourself exact and revenge. But we gonna get to him. So Rhonda. Um, he dies in Rhonda's arms and she's been having a mental issue since then. So everybody's scared of her because they're like, this baby, we don't know what she's going to do. And Rhonda is a little bit like, she don't play. She don't play. No. When we meet her, she's all prim and proper. But when they first, so when we meet her, they become friends. They didn't become friends straight away. It was something weird that happened they that met. they don't really talk about, but they talk about. So they met and um, Annette just is, she's in awe at Rhonda, right? And Rhoda, I keep calling her Rhonda. Rhoda, she's in awe with her and she thinks she's just the most beautiful thing. And she's so, she thinks she has a crush on her, honestly. Mm -hmm. And so she kind of follows her from a distance. But the first time they actually really just sit and talk, Rhoda asks her, can she watch her eat? And she never saw somebody love food as much as her, which I, it was a little weird for me for her to ask Annette that. It was a little weird. So two things. The first thing is we learned that Miss, that, oh my, Boat Wright was supposed to live with uh, the Nelsons at first. Mm -hmm. But because Uncle Johnny came, Boat Wright couldn't live with them. So that's how he got, ended up with Annette and her mama. And I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on that later. But the second thing is Rhoda and Annette's uh, friendship. It reminded me of Sula and Nell. Very much. Very Rhoda, much. Ooh, Rhoda is the Sula dislike, and Annette is the Nell. I mean, I don't dislike uh, Annette as much as I dislike Nell, but I think it's because Ro Annette had her moments where she was a little bit more feisty and she was able to use stuff. It. She wasn't mad the whole time. That's why I like her. I think that's what really drew me to their friendship dynamic was the fact that it seemed so much like Sula and Nell. I was like, this Sula all over again. No, literally, because they when they first have class together, this is when they first really sit down and start being friends. Um, Some girl was like trying to bully Annette and she ended up putting like a booger or something on a backpack that she thought was Annette's, but really it was Rhoda's. Child. Mm -hmm. Rhoda came running at that. <laughs> she Baby. took she took that girl head and dunked it in the um in an out of order toilet. And I want to know if the toilet out of order, how it did it flush? Held it for a minute. Yeah, how did it flush? Flushing her, she basically waterboarded her, and she was like, "If if if you ever touch my stuff again, I'm gonna kill you." And everybody in that room knew. She was not playing. And that girl tried to act tough. But we all know. She was all, is that, was is that a threat, Nelson? Oh, no, it's not a threat. It's a promise. It's a promise, baby. It was a promise. That's when I and knew so, that I was going to like her. Because I was like, Rhoda not the one to play with. 
one, two, three, or four to play with. Let me tell you, she was not playing. And Annette gets a little scared by this, but then she like, and whatever. So they become friends. Bo Wright hates it, hates it. She starts going over his house, going over their house. And at this point, child. Like a typical abuser, we he hates that. it. We're going to get into that. So at this point, he had already stopped some of her plans. Like she had planned to, um, Pee Wee had convinced them to go let her go to the field and like pick peas or something like that. Mm-hmm. Was it pea? It to pick some beans. So he had to, some beans. And so when she left, some boy like tried to smack on her butt. Bo right. Oh, she being fast. She can't go no more. Because he thinking that she trying to be with some other boy. So she Her age. Go. A boy her <laughs> age. Let's 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 okay. let's let's throw that in there. A boy her age, age appropriate. And she gets on his face because she's like, bro, it's a boy my age. First of all, and you know you're not supposed. She be getting on him like you know you're not supposed to be doing this. So why is you even doing this? You need to stop. That then like she would leave if she was um, was it when she was with Rhoda? I think it was when she would go to the library, stay at the library. Yeah, all she the time, would go to the library and study. And her and her mom's like, oh, Boat Rice said you've been running the streets. So you need to come home as soon as school is out and you need to stop leaving for school so early. Because mm-hmm. he said you run the streets. And in reality, she's off. trying to get him abusing her. So with Rhoda, he puts up this whole thing of like going to Rhoda's house where you know her brother Jock is there and he's so fast and da da da. Boy, he's so basically he's kind of jealous of Jock. Um, which is so annoying. So that's something that happens of like him not wanting her to go over there, but she's going over there. They end up having good times over there talking, but Bo Wright is talking about everybody like a dog. And so it gets to a point to where, um, Ro- Rhoda is having a conversation with Annette. It's two things that I, I don't think this happened first. Did she tell, okay, there's two things that happened. She told Rhoda that Bo Wright didn't like her. And she's like, why? I don't know that man. Yeah. And so basically she's like, well, I want to go look this man in the face. Introduce me to him. She's like, I'm going to go straight into mm-hmm. the pit of hell and we're going to do this. And he ugly. That's what she... <laughs> but he really was. But they were talking about like ugly. Oh, and that's a point in this book where we talk about it. Um, But of course, Annette thinks she's ugly. And she's like, her mom says something about like, which referring to the title, but she's like, her mom's like, God don't like ugly. And she was like, well, I'm ugly. Do God not like me? And her mom's like, you're not ugly. You're not ugly. Yada, yada, yada. But Annette, um, Rhoda is the first person to make her really not feel like she's ugly. She's like, you got beautiful skin like me. And your skin is clear. I got to wear makeup and do facials. Like, really making her feel good. She's like, Jock said you was cute. Jock her big brother. Jock said you was cute, girl. Like, give her a little bit of confidence. <laughs> and having this, um, like, this sense of foreshadowing that maybe her and Jock are gonna be a thing because you know, we're gonna talk about that. With the brother, <laughs> with the brothers of the we best gonna talk friend. about it. But um, yeah, so she tells Rhoda what happened, and Rhoda is like, "What's up?" Because she's like, "Well, she she's she's tiptoeing around it." So first, she tells Rhoda like, "Well, what what about if?" What would Jock do if somebody was was molesting you? Oh, well, what if it was somebody else? And she was like, well, who? he ain't going to do it for no girl. He don't know. Who is this girl? And so she keeps dropping little hints. And Rosa's like, girl, what happened? What's happening with you? She's like, how you know it's me? And Rosa's like, girl, who else can it be? You keep who talking. Else would it what, be? Other what, what other friends do you have? She finally tells Rosa. And Rosa is like, come on. Like how she said, let's go. And so she's like, this the man, and this what he be doing. And you have sex with him, and Rhoda's and Annette is like, I don't have sex with him. He, I, he do what he do, and I lay there. Yeah, and so um, eventually Rhoda actually comes over with her mom. With um, there they let Rhoda come over to her house, so and that this, they can meet her. This this scene, both right and Goosey May show they behind. They show they behind. And both of them pissed me off for two separate reasons that I'm going to get into later. But they just know they showed their behinds in this scene. Because the way, first of all, why the first thing, why the first thing when Rhoda walk in the house, is that your real hair? Hi, hello, how you doing? We don't do that? We don't do that no more? Mm-hmm. 
We don't we don't is do that, that Jackie no more. Real? Oh, this Jack is this real leather? Then to even tell a child, oh, it look like a wig. You look like a wig. And they have dinner. Rona's helping and staying and talking. She's, she, you know, she being all kind and nice. Being nice, she respectful, like, like a child, like a 13-year-old should when she go over somebody's house. She's helping them out. And then when she leaves, Bo Wright makes a comment. And it's like, you seen her swinging her hips in here? And good teammates like, yeah, begging to be raped. And Annette is like, what you doing looking at her hips? Because she's 13. What are you doing looking at her hips? What you doing looking at? Oh, why are you? <laughs> what, what you saying, girl? Oh, nothing. And then this comment of like, girls begging to be raped comes up. And they even talk about it. Her, it comes up several her, times. Of this idea of like this one girl. She was really cute. She had a big butt, all this type of stuff. She got raped. And they beat her for tempting the man. Like, it was a bunch of stories. This other little girl got raped. Um, and she was like, um, Annette was, not nah, Annette, Rosa was talking about some stuff that happened when she was in Alabama in the South. And she was like, yeah, this girl got raped. And the woman beat her and was like, don't try to come near my, like, women would be like, don't try to come near my husband. And one of the girls who got raped ended up killing herself because she was like, how bad this world treats Black women. And then her Annette's mom reinforcing this this idea that like girls are asking for like oh she just begging to be raped she just begging to be raped and when other things happen in the story she's bringing up Bo right and he's so great and he's so this and that it, it, it's the juxtaposition of this this is going this little thing I'm telling y'all is going to be a big thing later down the road because think about and this is something that people do not think about you don't know who in your life has been abused Mm -hmm. You do not know. 90, I will tell you this, and I'm not playing. 90% of women, of all the women you've met, have probably been abused. Mm -hmm. 90, sexually assaulted. 90% of all, the, whether they tell you they've been sexually assaulted or not, 9 out of 10, they have been sexually assaulted. And when you make comments like this, especially around a 13-year-old child, it's something that makes a woman, like women who are in their, like women, like even me, it makes people uncomfortable. So what do you think as a 13-year-old child hearing your mama say that a girl is begging to ask for it? She's begging to be raped. What do you think that means for her who is actually being raped? She's like, oh, I sure can't come to you now because they're going to beat me. And he was even, Bo Wright was like, earlier down the line, she was like, I'm going to tell mom. And she was like, and what's she going to do? I got to tell her, you think they won't believe that you came on to me for a Twinkie? It wasn't a real, it wasn't really tweaking, but like a piece of candy or something he said, you think they they will believe you or me if I say you came on to me for a piece of candy. And y'all wonder why girls stay quiet. Y'all wonder why girls don't talk to y'all, why they don't tell y'all stuff. And it's because of stuff like this. And don't say that this is a book. Because it's not a book, it's real life. Art imitates life. Art imitates life. This is real life. This is real life. And this is why you gotta be careful by what you say to people. And so with that whole thing, that was the start of like, and y'all see how like up there I'm getting is because stuff is coming together to where I could really just get in there how I wanted to. I didn't want to get too ahead of myself, but that's that really listen. And it made Rhoda mad too. Cause Rhoda is like, what you want to do? <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do about him, but we're going to do something because Annette keeps complaining and it gets to the point to like, at this point they are, Ooh, I'm skipping too forward. I was about to go to when they were 17. But before we get to that part, we could talk about whatever you have. Do you have something next around? Because I was going to talk about the two new people that came up. I have this note. It says, if she were smart, Annette, sweetie, you were six and left to the whims of a strange man by an incompetent mother and a reverend. And I I'm think, just let that speak for itself because I'm not ready to rant yet. And it's like you as a six year old, as a seven year old, you really don't have those. You you can't even as a 13 year old, you can't form those thoughts to really sit back because you don't know about abuses. You don't know these terms. You don't know a lot of women who were molested or even some women who are groomed who are like 16 talking to 21 year olds. They don't know it's wrong until you turn 21, you turn 22, 25. You'd be like. 16, you're a weirdo. But at 16, you don't have anything to compare it to, any anything to gauge in your mind. So she really was carrying that burden of like something that wasn't even her fault. 
then I have uh just one more thing here. In another reality, Jock and Annette could have worked. I wanted oh, I them. Wanted I wanted them together because I, I really like Jock. Even though Jock was a little um rough around the edges, I liked him because I felt like I don't know what it is. I just kind of felt like he just. I don't know. I just liked him. I liked him with. I thought his crush on Annette was cute. Number one, because he's more age appropriate to be with her than this old man. What was he like? I don't know. I want to say he was like 15, 16. Yeah, he was like 15 or 16. So and he's I'm definitely more age appropriate to be with Annette than this old child molester was. But, um,. But I was kind of upset that she didn't. I could understand why she didn't go for it, but it was kind of like, dang, in another reality where you weren't being abused, this could have worked. I really wanted, I agree. I really wanted them to work. I was like, this is so cute. It showed a softer side of job. I just knew that it was going to maybe. I just knew it was going to be just a little, at least a kiss. I thought, I just knew because it's like he had this little, cr and you can even see him getting softer on her. Like when she knocked on the door, he was like, what do you want begging on this door? And she was like, I'm here to get Rhoda. And he was like, oh, calm down. Oh, he was being like that. And he was more age appropriate. But Rhoda, listen, Rhoda thought she was funny. She was like, she had this crush, which dissipated eventually. It went away. But she had this crush. She was like, and she had the conversation with Bo Wright because they ended up having an argument about Jock, about her going over there. And she's like, I don't like boys. I don't like nobody. I do not like boys. I don't want nobody to do to me what you've been doing to me. And so he's like, oh, I thought you were funny. And now she, you know, she's Christian. So she really like, oh, Jesus. She's like, yeah, you and Pee Wee, they like, yeah, you and Pee Wee both, y'all both a little funny. She's like, who? I'm not funny. And he like blocks her way to just like talk crap about her or whatever. But I mean, you've been abusing her since she was seven. I'm, it's, of course she don't like boys. Of course. So when Jock does approach her, he comes into the kitchen to approach her. He like opens, he comes in, she's like, oh, so you were peeping at me. He was like, girl, no. I was You're literally walking little. by and I seen your curtain was open. I came to tell you your curtain was open. So let's close it. She closed it. And she's like, okay, so now what? Like, tell him to go. He said something else. That girl pulled a, a knife. And ruined all of our hopes. Yeah. Yeah, because after that, Jock didn't want to even talk to her no more. I was like, no. And how you scare away the scariest person in this book? The craziest person in this book, you scared away. So that happens, and she just, she lives a long life of abuse. I mean, a long then, life, a long two more years. Two other people. And then the new people come in. Yes, let's get to the new people. There is Florence, who is a nanny, basically, to Mott, who is, um... Scary, scary Mary's daughter. Daughter who is mentally ill. She has the brain of a three-year-old, even though she's older than all the other little girls in this book. So she gets Florence, who is half blind, to take care of her. I loved Florence. And the fact that Florence was the only person who saw through that man. And the only reason she saw through it is because she had been through the same situation herself with about five different other men. So five other knew. foster fathers and foster brothers abusing her. So she knew. And that girl was half blind and she was able to see through that man. And I think that really speaks to it. I'm not going to bring it up yet because it's in the next book. But I think that really speaks to the fact that how sad it was that this man had everybody wrapped around his finger. That a half blind girl was able to see through you so clearly, but the people with two eyes couldn't see nothing. I think it's because Florence, one, she listened, but also it's it's something when you've gone through it. It's something when you've gone through it. But also I think that she was like somebody who picked up on a lot of things that everybody, like she already knew about oh, Rhoda and her not wanting them to hang out. Like she knew about a lot of stuff and she was just real hush hush about it. I didn't, but Florence was really just a, I didn't dislike her. I liked her, but it wasn't like a, oh, I really just like you. She was more so like a, I see you, girl. I see you. I feel about like, I see we you. here. We here. I see you. I, I know. You don't got to say nothing. I know. 
And there's Otis. Otis actually comes first. Otis is this cute little boy from um, Jamaica that wrote a season. She's like, I'm a marry him, period. Point blank. That's she my said, husband. That's, she said, that's mine. That's it. Everybody else can go home. And she took up with this boy and just started ignoring Annette. And they're going to get jealous when Annette start talking to Flores. Yeah. So that whole little debacle happens because she don't like Otis. And Annette don't like Otis and Rhoda don't like Florence. This back I like and forth. Them both. And I like them both. And I do. I like them both. It was a cute little, cute little Caribbean boy. They used to be cutting school. And um it gets to a point to where what happens? So they all know about sex now. They all have have had their conversations about sex. And we get to a point in the book where um there's like a pregnancy scare. Annette no, it wasn't a even a pregnancy scare. scare. Annette was pregnant. And she's so they talk to Jock and they're like, Jock, what do you do with a girl if you got if a girl was pregnant, she didn't want to have a baby? And they have this conversation with him, big brother to little brother. He's like, who? Who's pregnant? He's like, who, who and, got you pregnant, Rhoda? Yeah, he was I, he was like, I, I told him I was gonna kill him if he put his hands on you. She's like, No, not, not him. And so he tells her basically drink a bottle of whiskey, gets a hot tub, the baby will be gone. And the baby was gone. And she was in the hospital. <laughs> yeah, she was in the hospital for alcohol poisoning. And she had to lie. Uh-huh. Now, it didn't go right, baby. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. And this is the <laughs> scene. This is the scene where I had my first rant. She had to lie and say that the baby wasn't his. And she was like, oh, I don't know. She was like, oh, God, her mama, oh, Lord, she don't know who the baby father is. Talking all this stuff. And I raised you right. And all this stuff. And poor little boy. So now she can't even leave the house. She cannot even leave the house because he's like, she's going to be going after all these little fast boys. And then he tries to say he, the baby wasn't his. He's like, oh, I'm too old for the baby to be mine. Just like you're too old to be, so, you, so you're too old to be having babies, but you're not too old to be having sex with this baby. Uh-huh. And he's like, oh, the baby's jocks. I don't know why he's so jealous of this little boy. He's so jealous of this little boy. I'm going to tell you why he's jealous. He's jealous because jock is age appropriate for Annette. That's why he jealous, but that's not who I'm ranting about. I am about to go on a rant about this. He made good. Annette's mother. Page, mm-hmm. page 171 of God Don't Like Ugly. Annette is laid up in the hospital, then just um miscarried her baby. And Gussie may have the nerve to be standing over that girl. Oh, whose baby is it? I thought she was a good girl. And this lady have the nerve to come out her mouth. After calling her daughter a bride of Satan, have the nerve to come out her mouth and say, where did I go wrong? Guess he may. Let me tell you where you went wrong. Let me tell you where you went wrong, Guess he may. You went wrong. The first place you went wrong was when you were sitting up there in your uh your employer's house with your daughter in the room next door, sitting there, you was providing adult services to your employer while your daughter's in the next room. That's where you went wrong in the first place. Because why do you have your daughter in a situation where she not supposed to be seeing stuff like that? That's where you started off going wrong. Actually, no, you went wrong before that. You went wrong before that when you tried to erase that girl daddy away from her life and tried to act like her daddy didn't exist. And you were sitting up there talking about some, oh, your daddy, you don't know who your daddy is. Your daddy left us, he ain't no good. That's where you really went wrong. But where you first went wrong was when you had your daughter around your employer while you was providing adult services to him. Then you went wrong secondly when you brought this man into this home that you do not why are you bringing a strange man into your home are you stupid you are a complete and idiotic the most idiotic person i've ever read in my life even worse than darn jack john from falcon 7 and that man was dumb but uh Hold on, because I because I'm getting mad. Because you brought this man into this home and you don't know this man. And first of all, let, I'm gonna go off on that reverend too, because you are a reverend. Why are you putting a man, a strange man, in a home with a single mother and a young girl? What is wrong with you? You put that man with another man. You don't put that man in a home with him because this because look what happened. Cause you don't put this. I'm getting upset. You don't put this man and this girl home and now he's sitting up here abusing this little girl when you should have did your job. And, and, and first of all, we, and then we find out you're supposed to put him with the Nelsons. Why are you putting this man with a whole family? Put this man with another single man who was able to take care of this man with his darn one leg, walking around, hobbling around on a darn one leg. What man gonna take care of him though? 
Gussie May, Gussie May, you went, because I'm not on him yet. Gussie May, you went wrong. You went wrong when you brought this man in this house and you didn't know nothing about this man talking about some, oh, we need him in here because he going to help pay the bills. It's, and then and then when you really went wrong is you didn't know nothing about nothing that was going on under your ho under your roof. That's where you really went wrong. How do you not know what's going on in your own house, Gussie May? The house that you, well, you don't pay the bills. Judge Lawson is paying the bills. You just paying the day-to-day -day stuff. How you don't know what's going on in your own home? How you don't know that it is man for a whole decade how you do not know for a whole decade that this man is abusing your daughter how do you not know how do you not have no suspicion how do you not know your own daughter's character how do you not notice that your child is sitting up here uncomfortable around this man that she don't like this man this girl has been uncomfortable around this man since you brought him in the home and you sitting up here oh he he yelled praise the lord he yelled hallelujah he gonna be a good spiritual guidance for you he ain't doing no spiritual guidance he's sitting up there uh, what you got to say what you got to say because if i keep going we're gonna be here all day Here's the thing that's double-sided for me. It's double-sided. I'm going to start with the, the benefit of the doubt, and then I'm going to go to the other one. Mm -hmm. The benefit of the doubt part is that as a parent, you, you can't protect your child from everything, and you don't know everything. Your child will always be in some type of harm. You know, it's, hindsight is 20-20. Your child will always be in some type of harm. It's going to always be something you can do better. But the second part is the arrogance of it all, is the arrogance of it all and thinking that you know somebody's heart and you really don't know. You don't know how they are, who they are. And thinking that, oh, yeah, I do, because she thought she did know everything. And the sad thing is Annette was really protecting her because she's like, oh, this will kill my mama. She literally took the, the fall and the blame and was like, yeah, I had sex with like, you know, three or four boys. And it would be worse for it to seem like it was on her than for you to know that actually this man that you brought into the house, he's the one that got me pregnant. Like your own daughter is protecting you from that because you have this false sense of security in this idea and this trust in men knowing you just like bring up the husband. Your husband left you for a white woman and you never knew it under your nose. He left you for a white woman. So why would you trust a man? But then again, it's like, oh, well, he's a church going man. He's this and that. And the thing that about abusers that this points out, and it's going, I'm going to go into much more detail later on. I keep saying that, but seriously, is that one, it's always somebody you know, and two, it's always people, the person that people don't expect. Because I think another big part of it is that she didn't think nobody, he even said it, nobody would have thought that she was getting abused. Because why would he abuse her? I can see a reason Rhoda, she's so pretty. She got his long hair. She walking around with a little with a little switch in her hips. Why would anybody rape Annette? That's not something I got to worry about with my baby, especially not with this man around. Nobody's going to harm my baby with this man with this one leg. And he got one leg. We ain't going to talk about that. We ain't gonna, we ain't gonna, we going to get into it afterwards. But... And that's 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 really why I was so pissed off with Gussie May because it's like, how do you not know nothing about nothing? You don't know nothing about this man you brought into your home. You don't know nothing about what how you don't know nothing about how your husband managed to have a whole affair under your nose, which I know that happens. And I know it's possible for somebody to have an affair and you don't know. But Gussie May, you knew nothing about nothing. You knew nothing about nothing and you blamed everything on your daughter. You and you weren't that young because she had her when she was in her 20s. You literally blamed everything on your child. Your child could be sitting there minding her business and you, oh, why are you sitting there looking like that? Why are you sitting in there over there talking like that? She not doing nothing but minding. We we need to move on. We need to move on because I... I... Yeah. At this point, they are 18. The grandma died <laughs> and it was a whole little beef because... When her grandma died, oh no, that was before her grandma died, and they had the funeral, huh? Yeah, her her grandma died, and they had the um the little funeral at the house, and Rhoda was acting weird. Now, what I put in my notes, <laughs> my notes is from the uh, second time I read. I put in my notes, Rhoda sitting up here putting on a show over grandma. <laughs> that girl was that girl was give her the Oscar. The Oscar, the Emmy, the Tony, that girl was performing for her life. <laughs> oh, Lord. Guys, it was an interesting scene. All his family came down from Alabama, India, 
Um, mm -hmm. the uh. The uh the Aunt Lola, the sister, Aunt Lola's daughters, Alice May and May Alice, the names. Yeah, it was it was a little too much. But they all come down, everybody talking scary Mary, all the other type of stuff that's going on. And we get, I guess, a little bit more history. Mm -hmm. But child, the grandma's death. The I was like good riddance, but good riddance. That girl was no really like bye. We you was doing too much. Good written. Okay. That girl, that girl put on a performance. She was acting for her life. Listen, bye, grandma. Now we get to that happened during high school during sometime that during happened, high school. Yeah, that happened in high school, right before the uh the other part. Before so, the uh, the big thing. But the reason I brought it up is because my next note literally say page 178 rant. What happened on 178? I'm going to tell you what happened on 178. This was right before the funeral. Boatwright is uh, uh, the grandma that died. And Rhoda's like, girl, my granny died. I need you to come over and help. And Boatwright's like, oh, you're not going anywhere. And so they get to arguing. And he basically, you know, he want to do what he what he do. And she like, I ain't doing that mess. This man had the nerve come out his mouth. And say, you pick a fine time to start acting crazy. He gasped. I should have never took up with you in the first place. You're right. You're right. You shouldn't have taken up with that little girl in the first place. Because she was a little girl. She was seven. You was in your 50s. What's wrong with you? You're nasty. You're nasty. And you know what, Mr. Boatwright? You know what? Do little Boatwright. You know what I had to say to you? You're disgusting. Why are you coming on to this little girl? This little why are you here? Let's start there. Why are you here? How did you get here? How did where did you come from? Where did you come from? Why did you come into this home with this it's this really single really mother good. and her daughter? Where did you come from? You don't you you can't work. You you depending on disability and you sitting up here abusing this little girl. Where did you come from? Why are you here? Nobody likes, and then you got the whole town wrapped around your finger. That's what, I'm not going to go too much in on you yet because we still waiting on you to die. And when you die, and I will be so happy when you die. I, now, as a good Christian man, I can't be ugly and say I want to dance on your grave because before I can't do that. After the prom. He died before the prom. Cool. We can go to that but, next. But, um. But I can't be ugly and say I would like to dance on your grave because as a good Christian man, I can't dance on nobody's grave and I can't celebrate nobody's death except the devil's when he finally ended up in the lake of fire. But what I'm saying is, Mr. Boatwright, I got some more words for you when we get to your death. Jock went off to Vietnam after the funeral. He decided yeah. he was going to go off to Vietnam and fight. And then uh, and then the, the, uh, the police officer that shot wrote his brother, he died. Oh yeah, so the police officer dies in an accident. Yeah, so a car those... accident. After Rhoda was <laughs> after, no, after Rhoda was letting Rhoda's supposed to be learning how to drive. That girl, she hitting about every curve. She running into everybody's cars, swiping everybody. Car... Girl cannot drive to save her life. But now looking back on it, I'm wondering, was it that she couldn't drive, or was she establishing? Was she was she establishing? The story that she could not drive. So when, well, no, because she didn't even. But she said she didn't want to. She said that she. So the reason why Rhoda couldn't drive, she was like, I could learn if I wanted to. I just wanted to have Jock around a little bit longer, because mm -hmm. he wanted to go to Vietnam, but he had to teach her Jock because nobody else, nobody else was trying to teach her how to drive. And Jock but was like, getting ready I to leave. Think you're... Boat right, finally, finally, exited stage left. So, so Let which me one of us is going to be ranting first? I'm going to let Tati go first. I'm going to let the lady go first. <laughs> so at this point, they are tired, okay? There are 17 at this point. It's been going on for four years. She keep playing to Rhonda. Rhonda said, you know what? I got you. I'm going to do something about it. What? I don't know yet, but I got, I got you. Rhonda, like, I'm tired of listening to what this man do to you. If you don't do something about it, I will. And so she tries to tell him, and this was like after the pregnancy and stuff like that, she tries to tell him that She's going to leave. And he's like, no, you're not. Because if you leave, bang, bang, pow, pow, there goes your mother. So she calls Ro uh, Rhoda, like, scared, terrified. 
bail me out. Well, she's not really, she's more so venting. But here's the thing, and they say this a lot, you can only vent to the people that you love so much. You could only, especially somebody like Rhoda, mm -hmm. only so much venting they will take. And it's been four years. And now you're trying to get away. You say you can't get away. So she was like, Rhoda said, you're going to be able to get something. away. I got something. I'm, I'm uh, Let me spend the night. Spends the night. He ends up dead. Oh, no, no, no. On the day that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. died. Yeah. On the day that Martin Luther King Jr. died. Rhoda he spent dies. the night, but right dies. She thinks that he's dead. She so Rhoda's like, oh yeah, he did. She's like, oh yeah, it's so sad, Martin Luther King. She said, who? No, I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about, I'm talking about old boy upstairs. He's a goner. He's his death for a little minute, right? He's there for like three. He was there for like three days. Short version. He's there for like three days before they. Thought. Yeah, he's there for three days before they find him. So that's how that goes, right? Mm -hmm. If y'all don't know, Rhoda killed him. Yeah, Rhoda, Rhoda, Rhoda went up there and, yeah. and took him out. Go find out how he killed him, how she killed him, but we we gonna just know he's dead. And the whole time, um, and it, the whole time I'm reading up to this part, the second time, I'm like, die, die already, die, please die, hurry up and die. Go. Bye. I'm thinking die. he might die from natural causes. I'm like, okay, when he gonna die? How he gonna die? Because this little girl keeps talking about he gonna die. She can't wait. So after he dies, they get into it because and it's like, well, I didn't want him to die. She was like, bro, you want him to stop, huh? Well, she was like, well, you told me do something. And she's like, I didn't say to kill him. She was like, well, too late. He stopped. What else? So Annette's sad. Annette's like, oh my God, God gonna get us. And she, she, first of all, girl, this is the 19, this is not even 1980s yet, girl. This is like the 60s, the yeah, 50s, the 1960s. 60s. Girl, she's talking about what the police officers office get us. Rhoda's like, which is true. What the, the police officers are gonna dig him up? What do you think is gonna happen? Like, I ain't gonna lie, Annette made me so mad and it gave Stockholm Syndrome. Annette had Stockholm syndrome bad because she was like, ah, nah, 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 girl. And you and you and you and you what? Stop. Stop. I think she was, okay. I think she was just more so worried that it was gonna come back she on her because it's like, even if we don't get caught by the law, the Lord still saw what happened. Lord. Yeah. So she, but it's too late. It's too late now. Now, this is when they started trying to make him human. And this is my problem with this is not making people human. My problem with this is how people interpret it. So reading this, you could interpret this a few different ways. I'm going to give y'all a one sentence summary because that's all he deserves. This man was abused as a child and then he spread that abuse to Annette. That, and that's how he lost his leg. He lost his leg to abuse. That's all he deserves. Go ahead. <laughs> but with the abuse... Basically, what he said, but with the abuse thing and her learning about his history, you can look at it one thing. You can look at it like, oh, oh my God, I feel bad for him now. You can look at it like, like I don't feel bad for him at all. I don't feel bad for him at all. Or how I look at it is that I feel, and this is the problem that people have. Everybody is human. Everybody has human qualities. There are good parts and bad parts. That's what Annette was saying about him. She was like, they were all bad. It was times when Mr. Boright did this. It's times when he did that. It's times when he was so, all these nice things, right? Because people are not one dimensional. But here's the thing that I think that people need to learn, especially like this book kind of shows it, is that you can, you can forgive, you can understand, and you don't have to condone. I think that's something that people struggle with. Like when you see people with serial killer documentaries and they're like showing him as a human, people are like, oh, he was this, he was that. Just like Bo Wright, oh, it's so sad. Yes, it's sad he had a life. But what did Rhoda say? It's plenty of people who have been abused and didn't go around raping people. Uh -huh. You can feel bad. And I feel bad for him. I feel bad for how he died. All that type of stuff. But at the same time, I can also recognize that he was wrong. He was not an angel. And he deserves some type of punishment. Now, who punished him is not my is not for me to judge, for me to decide. That's only God to decide how his punishment goes along. But who's to say that this wasn't his punishment? Who's to say that he didn't go in his sleep because he wasn't supposed to go in his sleep? 
if that makes sense. Like, who's to say he didn't pass from old age because he wasn't meant to pass from old age? But outside of that, though, that's how I, I look at it. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you got to see these human parts of him. I'm glad you got to understand because, yes, abuse people, hurt people, hurt people. Yes, you get these conflicting feelings when somebody does something wrong to you because it's, I punish you, I do this, but I'm also human, so I'm nice to you. You have these feelings. But at the end of the day, and something that I wanted Annette to get through her brain is that man was dead wrong. Dead wrong. Dead wrong. And I think something that the something that the murder robbed her from is that true. I guess she kind of had the anger later on, but like that true anger. Like that feeling of being able, she always was confronting him, but I think that his death left her with a sense of like remorse or feeling bad for him to where she couldn't fully absorb that like he, baby, at the end of the day, he's an abuser, period. End of the day, he's an abuser. I need you to understand this baby girl. That man is trifling, trash, disgusting. Maybe great in this way, but disgusting. Now, this is also the point where people start to show their behind. Uh huh. And I'm. I... Let me. Let... While we on his desk. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because. I was not satisfied with the way that this man died. I wanted more. I. First of all, the, the way his death came about was so. It was unexpected and it just happened so quickly. And I was like, when he died, the first time I read this, when he died, I was like, no, he's not allowed to die yet. He's not allowed to die yet because I wanted this, what I wanted. The first time I read this book, I was 22. I wanted this man to be exposed for the man that he was. I wanted this man to suffer the public humiliation that he deserved. But now that I'm older and now that I'm wiser, I feel like even if he had been exposed, Nobody would have believed in that. Just like he said in the book, nobody would have believed her. I feel like nobody would have believed her if she had exposed him. Number one, because of the time period, this and when he dies, it's like 1968. So if y'all not taking women seriously now when they say they've been abused, I highly doubt y'all was taking them seriously back then. Number one. Number two, I, you, I wanted this man to be exposed for who he was. I wanted his reputation in the community to be ruined. And then he could die and he could go to wherever he went to I don't know where he went. I don't know what the Lord decided to do with his soul, but you know, and then he could go die and be in wherever he went. But no, I feel like even if he had been exposed for the man that he was, he wouldn't have suffered no public humiliation because just last year there was a girl who it, um who revealed what a pastor did to her and everybody in the congregation was all, oh, you need to prove that what you're saying is true. You need to prove your claims. How do we know that you're not lying? How do we know that you didn't seduce him? And I feel like that same thing would have happened to Annette had she revealed what Boatwright had done to her when he died. They would have been just like, oh, you just bitter because he's dead and you need to be grateful for what he did for you and your mama. And I I was I was mad because I wanted more from this. I wanted him to suffer the way he made Annette suffer. I wanted him to have public humility. I wanted his reputation destroyed. I wanted that man completely and utterly just, and I know as a Christian man, that sounds horrible for me to say, but I wanted him to get what he deserved. I wanted him to get what he truly deserved before he died. And, I, and as we go back into what Tati was saying about these people showing their behinds, that's why I'm really mad at the people in this book. Because I'm like, y'all really showed y'all behinds. And this man left this earth like he was a saint and he wasn't. But go ahead. The death martyred him. He became a martyr. He became, I heard more good things about him after he died than before. I, his death is what really set it in stone because before his death, the only people that were really talking kind about him was her mom. Her mom was just like, oh, grateful that he was there. Oh, he did this. Like, you know, he gave, um, and he kept, I told <clears throat> Ronald this too, is he kept phrasing things as a way, as if he was looking out for her. He did. So that's something too about her mom. Like, I didn't, I I have me. I won't say I have mixed feelings because I know exactly how I feel about her. But a part of her and why she felt so safe with him is because he would say stuff like that, like, "Oh, Annette run the street. She leave before she leave 
early to school and she get home late. He don't want her really shit the library. He knows she's not doing nothing. But he's saying that because he wants her to be home. He wants her to be home so he can have her to himself. But telling her mom that it's like, oh, I don't want her running the streets. So she's thinking this is a good man. Everybody's thinking this is a good man. And when he after he died, I I did not think you could become more sick of somebody after death than before. But I guess that's the part of God don't like ugly. I guess that's the part of God don't like ugly because even though what they did, even though what they did, they did what they had to do. At the end of the day, now you hear more about him now than before. It's like his ghosts keep keep hunting you down. Because now all they want to do is talk about how he was a daddy to you. And I know he was a daddy to you. And I know he was a daddy. No, he was not. He was not my father. I know who my he father was is. It wasn't father. him. He was... I know who my father is. I so, still remember my actual father. It was not this man. Yeah. That's what so, I think. And you know what? Uh, before I let you continue, I just want to say I need to give Gusty I need to give Gusty May a little bit of grace, a little bit. I, I know I went in on her earlier, like I give her a little bit of grace because um, of the time period. It was the fifties. She couldn't have a bank account. She she literally had to rely on a man to help her raise a net. Unfortunately, the man she had to rely on was trash and. It's unfortunate that that was her her best option, but I do got to give her a little bit of grace, just a little bit. And this is where we get to the part that I thought about when he first got introduced, but we never thought about after. She was like, "I guess you old enough to know now." Me and me and Mister Bowright, we were not friends. We were basically, we were practically married. We were gonna get married. Yeah, he told me when you left, we were gonna get married once she oh, once she grew up and you know you left for college. And that's what really pisses I, me off. Mouth. That's what really I pissed threw up me in my off. mouth. Because then she because that's something a net none of us thought. That's what really pissed me off because that to me confirmed Gussie May knew nothing about nothing about what went on on her house. I know I just gave her grace. She but wasn't there. She wasn't there. But she was she was gone. She was working 10 hours a day. She was gone before. Before it was time for Annette to come go to school, and most of the time she was Annette was asleep by the time she got back. What time did she have to know about what was going on in her house? She trusted that the man who was with her every freaking night, she's like, Yeah, he would come over there every night. She had no thoughts, and it was baby. That's when I said, Oh, this man literally got them wrapped around his fingers. This is freaking disgusting. And what really so pissed they grew me up off with him. What really, really pissed me off was these people sitting up there talking about some, oh, Mr. Boatwright's such a God-fearing man. He walk around yelling, praise the Lord, hallelujah. He live right. Anybody, and I mean anybody, can walk around yelling, praise the Lord, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. The devil himself was an angel before he became the devil. He was literally in charge of leading everybody else and yelling and praising and singing, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we praise you. So if the devil can praise the Lord before he get kicked out of heaven, before he got smacked out of heaven like lightning. What makes you think that this man is not who he is portraying himself to be? Why are y'all so stupid? Why? Continue. Here's the thing, though. Especially working with kids, you'll learn this. Most abusers are the most charming people that you will ever meet. You will never, ever in your life expect for an abuser to be an abuser. I promise you, you would never expect because who they are behind closed doors and who they are around you is two different things. And you have to either be paying very close attention or you have had to gone through similar things or be blessed with God with discernment to really know the difference because that's what happens. Most abusers, and like he said, who's going to believe you? I'm a god fearing man. I go to church. I sing every Sunday. Not only that, though, he used to take care of the house. He watched her. Right? I'm taking in his child, watching her. I make sure she clothed. I make sure she fed. I don't just feed for her. I feed for everybody. I feed everybody in the community. When she, one time I walked limping in the snow. I got one leg limping in the snow. Walked all the way to wherever to go get her some snow boots. I volunteer. I do all of these things. All, all of this is what happens. And all we're seeing, which we're blessed to see, is just a net side of the story. All like, like Rhoda said, all I, all I know is what you told me. I don't know nothing else, right? But who he was in the community really unfolded after he died and really spoke to like, not just then, even now, most people who abuse people are people you would just never expect. Like when Tina Turner got abused, 
And like when when the movie came out and they were like, people were still dating Ike. She was scared to even come out about it because she was like, you know, people don't think I'm lying. And people still don't take it seriously. How many women get abused now and people still are like, uh-uh, he couldn't have. Or she had to have done this. She had to have done that. Be it's because they position themselves in that position of power. So then it's like, okay, who's going to believe you? Because who really, really think about it. If somebody came out and told you your pastor raped them, the pastor you've been knowing for the last 10 years, the pastor that, that came over and helped your mom when she was sick, the pastor that's singing in church every day, preaching about the power, the about God and things like that, you would be like, Pastor Johnson. Pastor Johnson raped you. And that's why you have to like, how I said, y'all need to be careful. You never know who in your life has been abused. And you need to listen to kids and to people when they say stuff like that. Because nobody's going to say, there are there are a number of girls who may have a lot about being raped. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it has to happen. I know people that it's happened to. So I'm not saying that it does not happen. But majority of women are not lying when they say they got raped. What do I get from coming forth and telling you that a pastor raped me? What do I get from that? In a time where they would have you literally hug your abuser in church to forgive him. Which is a a, a, a fate worse, worse than death to me. Because I feel like that's some type of stuff they would have did. Honestly, as much as they want to talk, we don't get into the second book. But I honestly don't believe that anybody would have believed her. And if they would have believed her, I wholeheartedly believe that they would have forgave him. That's what I feel like. Mm -hmm. I don't feel, I don't believe in any piece of me that he would have received any repercussions if that man was still alive. I 100% I, I agree with you. When he died, the book starts going really fast. So after he dies, a Ray graduate, Pee Wee oh. decides to take himself to... Vietnam, because he said, I'm going to become a, a real man. I hear what y'all yeah. be saying. Y'all be calling me funny. And poor Wrong. Annette. Oh, oh yeah. Rhoda got married and to Otis. She got married to Otis, moved down to Miami and Annette. I, um, you know what? I can't even be surprised with the, the turn that Annette took because given how her life had gone up to that point, I feel like Good Sime and Boatwright primed her to go down that road. Because Good Sime, whether she meant to or not, exposed her to that life by having her around Scary Mary yeah. and accidentally, you know, showed off her skills in front of her daughter without her knowing. And then Boatwright, of course, was paying her every time he molested her. I felt like they primed her to go down that road. Yeah. So the road she went down is just so happened the road that she went down. I was not judging. I I don't judge anybody, especially anybody. I was only one person in this book that I judge, and I, I I guess I'm trying to work on that. But I I I didn't figure, but I figured. I figured. Once she got the money, got it gone. At least she loved. And Rhoda was real. Rhoda said, "Baby, I'm not talking to you until you are out of this. <laughs> until you are out of this state. Like, I'm not talking to you until you prove okay? that you have left." Because yeah. you play games at my house. So so do Lil Boat, right? Call himself doing a, a good deed. Like that's supposed to erase all of the years of trauma he done inflicted on this girl. And he left her a little $10,000 check. Actually, it was a $20,000 check. But it was supposed to be split between Gussie May and Annette. So Gussie May got $10,000 and Annette got $10,000. Yeah, after all his debts and everything else was paid off. Which, honestly, if you want me to be honest, that he thinks that's his lover. I'm not surprised he left her money. I don't think he did it out the like, oh, kindness of my heart is let me leave some money behind for my lover. That's how I, that's what I think he did. I don't think it was a, I think it was a kind, kind gesture, but I think just like how everything else, everything else he did had like a twisted meaning behind it. I wholeheartedly believe every, what he did had a tr twisted meaning because I do believe that he loved her, but he loved her like a lover. Like he thought that was his girl. He thought that, that was his woman. He claimed her, in my opinion, he was more possessive and claimed her more than he claimed Annette's mama, Gussie May. Because Gussie May, 
was in, a, in in front of him with the judge and doing all other, you know, like you didn't have no problem with that. But little girl, you just had a whole little, you was doing too much with. But she gets her check, she moves, thank God. She feels stupid because she did all of that she had to do and she got her check. But she moved. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And she had a whole, she had a lot better life. She had a lot better life in there. And then, 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 then. Yeah. So let's History. let's just get to it. She moved out to um Erie, Pennsylvania. And she had a little trouble at first getting established because racism. Don't nobody want to mm-hmm. um house her. Don't nobody want to hire her because she's a, a um a black woman, a healthy sized black woman. I'm mad they called her back after she got her job. For real. I'm real mad. They called her after she got that job. Not everybody would call her getting her this office job. But that's really how it goes. That's really how it goes. You be working, 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 trying to get you a job as soon as you get a job. All of a sudden here come, oh hey, we got an opening, you know, you if you interested, where were you when I was out here struggling? Where were you when I was sitting up here trying to get into where were you at? So she moved out there to Erie, Pennsylvania, and um, she meets this boy from the Church of God in Christ, Levi. So do, Levi, do you see my face? She meets him. Do you see my face? Yeah. Annette meets Levi, a church boy from Georgia, twice her age. Because remember, Levi had been there for a good 15 years. And Annette is only 18. Now, she never, at this point, for the longest, she didn't go out and date with him or nothing. She just, you know, they were cordial. They lived by each other. Her factory job. But then two things happened. Mm, Pee wee happened. Pee Wee, so Pee Wee messaged her, texted her. her. Pee Wee sending her letters. Florence sending her letters. She ain't really writing back Florence, of course, but she messaged Pee Wee. And Pee Wee, like, girl, you better, he started threatening her. Girl, you better, you better (laughs) message me back before I start talking crap. Let's clarify. Pee Wee 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 didn't threaten her like uh, how Boatwright was threatening her. Pee Wee -wee was doing it in that way, like, you know, friends. Friends, like, I'm going to talk around town. Like, yeah, he was like, I'm, I'm going to talk about you all around town if you don't respond to my messages. So she started responding. They going back and forth a little bit. And Pee Wee come. He like, I'm about to be, I'm about to be on my side of town business and family. Pee Wee knock on her, she, somebody knock on her door. She like, who's knocking? Somebody say her name or say me. She like, who in the world? She opened the door. That's a five minute at her door. She said, who is this? What's Pee Wee real name? Jerry. Jerry. He said, Jerry Davis. Jerry. She said, who is Jerry? <laughs> who is Eli? <laughs> He's like, who is Jerry? So he, like, <laughs> he was like, come on, it's Pee Wee. And so she was like, Pee Wee. Because Pee Wee didn't grow like four inches. Pee Wee, you ain't Pee Wee no more. Then got buffed up. And Pee Wee didn't, they, so they sit there chatting. Jerry feeling himself. They, going, they end up going to sleep. She she put Jerry a little pallet on the couch. Like they did when they was kids. Yeah. Next thing you know. Annette wake up. Jerry standing over her. No words they said. No words need to be said. They did what they did. And Annette gonna run to the... Rhonda. Rhonda. Rhonda, Guess Guess who I slept with? Me and Pee Wee. What is it? Pee Wee? She was like the rest of... Pee Wee? Not our Pee Wee, baby. But that that was short lived. That was short lived. As, Annette, he had as to... soon as Annette woke up, Pee Wee Jerry gone. Jerry done left. He done ran out the house. He got what he wanted and, and dipped. And I was like, "Wow, Jerry! Wow!" But they wow. they still talked as friends. They were still messaging, still talking as friends. So it wouldn't. But yeah, that was short lived. She was like, because even on the phone when they were talking, when she was talking to Rosa, she was like, "I guess who was you know." It's a one night stand. I guess That's it was what, what it was. But what if he overheard her say that though? He what probably if did. He overheard her. 
Because she was nosy. What if he, I didn't think about that till now. But what if he overheard her say it was a one night stand and was like, oh, bet I'm getting up out of here. So she ended up getting serious with Levi. Who, baby. Baby, baby. Um, this I, is where Annette's get dating it. life pissed me off. <laughs> Jerry pissed me off. Levi pissed me off. They were together for three years. Rhoda has a baby. Names the baby David. The baby dies. Crazy, right? I know. Baby dies. Annette comes back to Pennsylvania. She's getting a new lease on life. She's talking. Baby, why in the world? She didn't make Levi mama. Huh, Levi been dating. They have a routine. He come over these nights. He misses one Saturday. One Saturday that they have lunch, have dinner together. Call his little house. Mom picks up the phone. Levi had a wedding. Levi is married. <laughs> and you know what? Levi is married. Oh. And you, let, let's let's talk about it because the mama knew she, she knew she knew that Levi had a whole other woman because there is no way and she she and she allowed that mess to happen she knew that man was seeing Annette and the other lady at the same time she knew talking about some oh he didn't tell you what you knew he bye bye but didn't you know that's bye y'all that's true to life. That's true to life. Some mamas, not my mama, but some mamas will set up and they will allow their sons to have one, two, three, four, little, and they will sit right along with it and go right along with it. Cause they're like, oh, my son is my son. He don't know. No, I know who my son is. You know, I can't help who he is. Yes, you can. Cause you raised him. You're his mother. So that happened. Yeah, that happens. Her one of her close friends dies. She commits mm -hmm. suicide because her, her husband was abusing her. She ends up harming herself. And so Annette's like, it was something else that happened. Annette said, It's time for me to go home. It, I can't yeah. do this. Mm -hmm. I got to, but it I was it was Levi. Home. It was Levi. It was Levi. Levi, she had to go home. And she said, you know, I'm like, sick of this mess. I'm going back home and I'm gonna stay. So she's going home. But at this point, Rhonda has all Rhoda has also called her because Baby Jock could have come back from Vietnam messed up in the brain. He he, he goes he's down suffering from um some PTSD. Now, mind you, Otis, so we didn't tell you this, but Otis and Rhoda live next door to a KKK like clansman, like the head dragon. And their daughter, you know, is always over Rhoda's house. Somehow Jock gets this 15-year-old pregnant. So that's a whole she, ordeal that they're trying to figure out. I thought she was, I thought she was grown by that time. Oh, she might have been grown, but I thought she was like 15, 16. But he gets her pregnant, right? So, but the girl ends up passing away. The girl ends up passing away. Something happened. It was a freak accident where like um a radio ended up in her in her bathtub. <laughs> Whatever. A radio ends up in her bathtub. So we go to we go back home. So everybody go back home, y'all. Ooh, child. They get back home. We ready to settle down. Or so we think. Everybody talking. And Rhoda comes back. But when Rhoda comes back, Scary Mary mentions something. Scary Mary mentions to Annette the that uh, that the little girl April then died in Rhoda's house. And that sent off some, uh, some warning signals for Annette. And they was like, uh-uh. No, we what you what you mean the girl died in Rhoda's house? I thought she died in her own house. And we all were kind of thinking it. We all were kind of thinking it, but we just didn't say nothing. But but Rhoda was like, nah, let me just at least ask. And they get down there with Rhoda as soon as everybody go to bed. Um, Miss Rhoda, why I hear from Scary Mary that April died in your house? Did you kill that she girl? Said, what they got what her down in my house got to do with anything? She was like, you know as much as me that it got something to do with something. But here's what killed me. This girl gonna really sit there and say, I had to do it. It's not, she said she had to do it. A nigga gonna say, you didn't drug me into something else. I didn't drag you into nothing. You, you asked ask. me. <laughs> I kept you away from me. What do you mean? And then she like, oh, you already killed two people. Uh, Rona said four. Four. <laughs> four? 
we not gonna we not gonna speed past that man. What you mean for? Or, and she like, oh Lord, no, you over here killing all these people. And that's where the scene he brought up. She didn't kill the police officers, she didn't kill grandma, she, she didn't, didn't kill, kill granny, the the girl, but boat right. She didn't so, kill about four people. And Rhoda was sitting up here. Give her the Oscar. Give her the Oscar. That girl was performing for her life. This is my second time reading this. So the second time I'm reading this, I'm looking at Rhoda like, okay, Rhoda. So, 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 so was the accidents that you had these planned? It was, you, you sure was acting for your life when, when, when people started leaving the earth. But you got to know, anytime Rhoda say, yeah, my cousin, you know, my cousin in Alabama, he died like that. You know that she didn't kill somebody. You know, freak hack freak accidents happen all the time. I saw on TV that like this man, he was drunk and he he fell down the stairs. Y'all, you know your best friend. But Annette was just so scared. She said, I have to get out this friendship. So that's what she, happened. They got out the friendship. She was like, no, really man, this too much. You done you done killed four people and you and, and now I and now I know. Somehow though the Nelsons move out the house down. Mm -hmm. So we don't see the Nelsons no more. And the last where we end this book is Pee Wee is in bed with Miss Annette and giving me hope. That's how it ended. Annette and Pee Wee, they doing what they do, and, and Annette and Rhoda them broke up. And when I heard that, I'm like, that I ain't gonna lie, this was a four. This was a four. This God don't like ugly was very good for me. It I was. Loved, I really I kinda, enjoyed this book. I, I think because I knew it was another book coming, I was like, oh, yeah, let me get to the next one. It didn't feel completed. But this was actually, looking back, this was actually a really complete book. This is a good book. I would recommend this book. The first time I read this, this was a five for me. But then the second time, it was a four. And I think the four is more true to um, how I feel about it. Because uh, I liked, I, I really, I don't want to say I enjoyed this book because of the topic. But I liked it. It was um, it was it was charming. You know what it was? This book, this book was black. This was a black book. It was black it was un it was unapologetically black. I enjoyed this book. I enjoyed this book. I actually really did enjoy this book, and I think it's also different, also perspective coming from me because I am a woman that like, it is triggering. It does go into grave detail, but it's nothing that like. I, Cause I had to skip over some pages, but it's like it sounds so terrible to say, it, but it's like typical. Like this is not a story that is unheard of. It's like it's but it's like you, you know people have, in this book. You know people in this book, but you do have elements that like okay, that is not a part of the normal story. Like your best friend smothering the old man to death is not a part of the normal story that we that we have. But it was a really good book. I give this a four. I give this a four. I like it. Go copy it. Go pick it up. I gave it a four too. My only thing is, my only thing is, I recommended it, and I didn't think, oh lord, what if Tati had a situation like this? I don't want to give her nothing triggering. Listen, but you told me no. He told me the trauma got real, so I was like, so once I started seeing it, he told me the drama got real. So when I started seeing the trauma, I said, oh, this is what he was talking about. Let me skip. Let me skip. This way he was, this, yeah, I, this I, I wish that's the only thing I regret. I wish I had been like more specific about what it was. Yeah, good child. But I but, knew from the beginning. Thank you for watching today. If you enjoyed it, be sure to check out more content from us and be sure to check out Tati's channel, Tati Simone, T A T E S O M N E. And if you have an issue with it, take it up with her mama, not me, because she don't want to spell it. No, I, it's not my fault. But be sure to check out more content from us and make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our channels. Until next time.